Ex-Hurricane Debbie moving in from the west. you thought that storm was over think again what was left of hurricane debbie which was affecting florida a week ago more than that now and drifting across the carolinas is now heading towards the british isles an extratropical storm at 51.2 north 20.3 degrees west it is august 12th as of 4 p.m local time uh, british uh, summer time of course it's 45 miles per hour 70 kilometers per hour with a pressure estimate of 987 millibars moving nearly due east at 53 miles per hour which sounds like a lot but for an extra tropical cyclone that's pretty normal it is heading towards the british isles and of course ireland will first feel the effects of this storm as it arrives tomorrow so here it is right now, uh, it has a significant wind field on uh, most sides except northeast um, and that will uh, really get blowing up again towards the northeastern side when it gets closer to Scotland tomorrow. It is currently 675 kilometers from Tirac, the one of the most western points of Ireland, 742 from Tralee, 801 from Galway, 823 from Cork and 985 from Dublin. Sounds like a long way at the moment, but it is moving at a good pace and it will be arriving by the time we get to tomorrow. Current wind speeds, of course, aren't the strongest, so it isn't going to be a massive event this, but it is still a substantial windstorm that could deliver storm force winds to coastal areas. What's the primary hazard then? Well, really it's going to be hazardous travel more than anything else, but some areas will be feeling the effects of strong winds, mainly along the coastal fringes of Western Ireland and Western and Northern Scotland, the Outer Islands and part of the mainland of the Highlands, with winds of up to 50 miles per hour and higher gusts. High rain rates as well could lead to localised flooding and dangerous travel conditions like that uh, over the next uh, couple of days, so do take care if you're further west. Here's the current wind field and what we expect will happen to it over the next few days. It will actually decrease. Look how quickly it uh, shovels itself through the western coast of Scotland. Blink and you miss it, that animation there. Uh, really scooting around, turning northwards towards the end. We'll get another look at that wind field on some of our models in a little while. But it will dissipate very quickly as it moves off towards the north and it gets absorbed inside a much larger tropical cyclone. Uh, not tropical cyclone, extra tropical storm to its west near Iceland. You can tell what my usual job is there. So currently 45 mile per hour sustained winds. Uh, there's a chart from uh, Meteoran there on the left hand side uh, showing it's that smaller system to the south there. The one to the north there caused a lot of those storms last night and this morning um, but it's another one moving up behind it and will be lining up for a close pass towards the coast of Ireland and Scotland. Met Office haven't issued any warnings for this system, but I expect that they'll want to issue some kind of wind warning, at least for the Outer Hebrides, but also for some other parts of Scotland as well. We've done a little chart too, showing where we might expect those strongest winds, and it should appear in a moment. Here it is, uh, showing that the, of course, the strongest winds there, much further towards the northwest, 50 miles per hour or higher, uh, for parts of the Western Isles of Scotland and little parts of the mainland as well, parts of the Isle of Skye, and up right way up towards the west, uh, the northwest there. 40 miles per hour a little bit further inland and 30 miles per hour over a large area of Scotland and pretty much all of Ireland could see 30 miles per hour somewhere along there. So let's take a look at the GFS model and what it is predicting over the next few days. You'll get a little bit of a better look at what to expect then. So the storm system moving in quite quickly and then moving off towards the northeast. Again, blinking, you miss it there. And after that, a few more little systems moving on around. So I've done a little annotation next time we go through that loop to show you the system. There it is, moving up northeasterly, uh, developing again just off the coast of the Western Isles and then shooting off towards the northeast. The winds go down very quickly once it passes the northern tip of Scotland so the Shetland Islands probably won't get any storm force winds but Orkney might. Looking at the uh, rainfall, uh, the simulated radar imagery here showing that most of the heaviest rainfall will be on the western side of the storm 
eastern side not so much in fact a lot of the rainfall uh, will be occurring from another system following in behind that so obviously now we're talking about later on in the week uh, for potential more rainfall but certainly with X Debbie uh, could be producing at times heavy rainfall around the sky area and western Scotland uh, whole general area what's left of uh, Debbie will be moving straight up northwards towards Svalbard uh, and those icy wastelands way up towards the north. This is the total expected rainfall amounts over the next seven days. Now, usually Western Scotland is a very wet place in general, and once again, you'll be seeing quite a lot of rain in those areas in that seven day period. A fair bit as well in the parts of Northern Ireland and Western Ireland too, and parts of Northwestern England as well. This won't all be from Debbie, in fact, very little will be, uh, but this will all be from a buildup of systems moving in behind it. Up to four inches of rain there in Western Scotland, that's 100 millimeters and in many other locations they're getting to half that across parts of western Scotland. And these are the sea surface temperatures round about now. This was from earlier on this morning, so you'll see those land temperatures aren't as high as obviously what the high temperatures have been today in the east of England. Extremely hot temperatures up to 33 degrees Celsius, around 26 there at 10 a.m. But in the coastal regions the sea surface temperatures there uh, near where the storm is currently it's still around 19 degrees and it will drop to around 14 or 15 by the time it gets towards the western isles of scotland so a little bit of energy there for this system uh, it is above average sea surface temperatures around the whole northern part of the atlantic and finally the satellite imagery well here it is it certainly looks uh, quite interesting on the imagery um, it's got quite a lot to it uh, parts of the western side getting a little bit uh, left behind there but it's pushing on eastwards uh, the leading edge of it north and northeast uh, doesn't have strong winds but has quite a bit of rainfall as we move towards uh, Ireland there looking at those uh, images uh, this is sort of the air mass look of the thing so it's very dry near the center but there's quite a bit of convection on that northern side of it and a secondary area way towards the southeast there as well very broad system of course um, and will obviously have a broad wind field but it will succumb it will weaken a little bit and then it will blow up a new burst of wind as it gets close to the coast of scotland which will be a lot more narrower and quite tight now this uh, you can see this line moving through. This isn't from Debbie. This is from the previous system that's just moving north right now. That's what's caused all of the storms and rain that we've had overnight and in some places during the day today. Just about to clear the coast of Scotland now and off the coast of England as well. There were a few storms near Nottingham earlier too. So uh, this system could provide some strong winds along the western fringes of the British Isles.